It's TK Friday, and this is the first episode of the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. This will be a full edit. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me again today. Today, I have another full edit. An image of some beautiful ice diamonds shot up in Iceland. Today's image comes to us from Gopal Kalyuru. I'm probably pronouncing your name wrong, so please forgive me for that. If you have an image you'd like me to edit on the TK Friday, go to the description of this video, click on more, scroll down, you'll find a contact me link. Contact me and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. By the way, if you don't speak English, YouTube is dubbing the audio of my videos into different languages. In the bottom right hand corner of the video, look for the gear icon, click on that, and then look for audio track. Right now you see it says English, click right here, and then just click on the language that you want and YouTube will dub my audio into your language. So that is some pretty exciting news if you don't speak English. Now, as always, I start my edit out here in Lightroom, and I did use a linear profile on this image, made some basic edits, did not use any sharpening or noise reduction on the image. As far as lens corrections, I always check on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And then for transform, I just did an auto transform. And then I did do a 16 by nine crop in this image because I thought it looked good. And now at this point, I would just right click on the image, go to edit in, click on edit in Photoshop 2025. But hey, I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop. By the way, don't forget, as always, you can download this image as well as the PDF notes and give this edit a try. Just go to the description of this video, click on more, scroll down through. You're going to find Dropbox links for the image and the PDF notes. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, I'll have a link in the description below this video that'll take you over to Tony Kepper's web store. There's a bunch of free panels over there that you can pick up. You can pick up the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. It's only $33. There's training videos from Sean Bagshaw. I highly recommend them. You can use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off your entire purchase. When you use my promo code, I make a small commission and this helps to support my channel. So thank you when you use my code. But check out Sean's videos over here. Really cool. And don't forget, there's also the TK Magic Mixer for making black and white conversions. And it works with color as well. So a lot of good stuff. And again, you can save 15% off your entire purchase with my promo code DK15. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is do a balance and contrast on this image like I always do. This time it's going to be on the subject, which will be the ice and the background, which will be everything but the ice. Now, I tried using select subjects. So I'm going to click this and show you what happens. And you'll notice it misses this part of the ice, and it just doesn't get the ice quite right. So I had to go about this a different way. I'm going to click on this button to deselect, and I'll show you what I did. By the way, this is not a TK9 issue. This is a Photoshop issue. It's having a hard time selecting the ice because there's not a lot of contrast here between the ice and the water. To select the ice, I'm going to use the object selection tool, or we can use the TK selection brush. I'm going to click this button right here and get the TK selection brush. Now, this brush is absolutely free. If you don't have it, you can go over to the TK web store and pick it up. I'll click this button right here. This is working with the marquee in the object selection tool. I tried selecting all of the ice at once, but I didn't have good results. So you'll have to select each piece of ice individually. So what I did was gave myself a really small brush about that size. And then on this piece of ice, look for the furthest side to the right and give it a click like right there. And then look for the left side the furthest left side and give that a click and then click the highest point of the ice like right here and give it a click and the lowest portion of the ice which is I think right here and then click this button and it'll make a selection and it's done a pretty darn good job we'll check it out closer in a bit but next click this button again and now click the right side of this piece of ice right here let's click the top of the ice right here the bottom right here and the left side right here. And now we'll click this button again. This will add to that selection. Okay. And it's done a good job. It's 
overshot this area right here, but I'll show you how we can fix it. I went ahead and zoomed in so we could see the areas that it's missed. See this area of water right here? It's added this area to the selection. So what we can do is click on this button right here. This just lets us use like a lasso tool. It's just like the regular lasso tool in Photoshop, only it is a brush. Now I need to click minus to subtract this area. And now with a nice small brush here, I'm just going to paint off this water area right in here. Now take your time. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, something like that. And now I can click the plus and make the brush a little smaller. And this area I missed right here, I can add this back in. And this area right here, I can come and paint this in just like so. And then when you click this button again, it makes that selection. And now down in this area right here, I need to subtract this stuff off right in here. So let's click this again. This gives us just like the lasso tool, only it's a brush. We'll click minus and I'll make the brush larger. And what I'll do is just paint off this area right in here like so. And I think, I think that's going to be good. I think over here looks pretty good everywhere else. And then just go all around your image and you have that nice magenta overlay that you can look at everything and make sure you got everything just right. And you know what? I think we are going to be good with that. Now on our TK selection brush, click this button and that makes the selection. And now we need to save this out as a channel. I'm going to click this button here and get rid of the selection brush for now. So come over to the combo or CX panel, click this button right here and give this a name. I'm going to call this ice and click OK. And now we need to invert this selection and we'll click this button right here on the combo or CX panel to invert the selection and click this button again to save and we'll call this background BG and we'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll note we have the ice and background saved out as channels. And now we'll set up the color grading tools for ice and background. So come up to the multi mask panel, click the my channels button, click ice, and then click the calculator button, click X to intersect, and then click the luminosity mask button, click on midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping, click equal to make the calculation. Now we need to output the mask. So click on the color grading tool button. And now here's our color grading tool there. We need to get to the multi mask panel. So click X on the color grading tool. And again, we'll come back to the multi mask panel, click the my channels button. This time we're going to click BG for background. We're going to click the calculator button again. We're going to click X to intersect. And again, click the luminosity mask button. Click midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. Click equal to make the calculation. And now just the background is selected. And now we're going to output this to a color grading tool. So we'll click this button right here. We'll start out with the background on the color grading tool. I'll click the midtone button. And I just want to open up the midtones a little bit up to like right there, plus 16. I want to give them a bit of a warm color grade. I'm going to click right here just to warm that up a little bit. And now we're going to click on the shadow button. I want to darken up the shadows. I'm going to drag this brightness slider to the left and stop right there at minus 35. I just want to add a little bit of blue to the shadow. So I'm going to click right about here just to add some blue. And now we're going to click on the first color grading layer for the ice. Let's start off with the midtones. I'll click on the midtone button. I want to really open up the midtones in the ice. So I'm going to come up to right there, plus 64. And I just want to give that ice a little bit of a blue tint. So I'm going to click right there. And now we're going to click on the shadow button and we want to darken up the shadows in the ice. And so I'm going to take that back to right there, minus six. And I just want to cool off that ice. I'm going to click right here. I want to make these color grades consistent with the notes. So see this hex number right here. I'm going to go ahead and type in the number from the notes and click this button right here. And that way the notes will match up to the edit I'm doing today. Next up, we're going to do some mid-tone contrast. So what I'll do is I got to close my color grading tool by clicking the X. Nothing changes on the color grading layers. We'll click on the luminosity mask button. I want to use mid-tones two. I want to output this to a curves adjustment layer. Now note, I was on this first color grading layer. So if I hold my command or control key down and click on the curves adjustment, it'll put it up to the top, which is important. I don't want it down above the ice. So I want it right there. And then we're going to come up to the preset and click here. This is a drop down. Click on strong contrast RGB. And then I want to take my opacity and pull it back to right there, 61%. 
Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Just a nice little mid-tone contrast. After mid-tone contrast, I usually feel my mid-tones get a little dark, so I like to lighten them up. Just a subtle lightening. So we're going to come back to the multi-mask panel, click on the luminosity mask button, and we're going to use the most subtlest of the mid-tones, which is mid-tones 1. We're going to output that to a curves adjustment layer. And then simply on the Combo or CX panel, click Screen. That lightens up our mid-tones. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before, here's after. And I think that's good. I'm going to leave that at 100% opacity. Next up, you see the light areas on the beach here. I like to darken these up a little bit and add a little bit of saturation to them. I think that'll look really nice. So let's do that next. We'll use a luminosity mask to target these areas. So we'll click the luminosity mask button on the multi-mask panel. This is lights one. Here's lights two. And I think lights two isolates these areas. And now we need to output this. So I'm going to output it to, we're going to come here, see the hamburger menu, click this. We're going to output it to a multiply brush. So we'll click this button right here. And that gives us a curves adjustment layer in the multiply blend mode with a black mask. But we are painting through that lights two selection. So what I want to do with a brush at like 50% opacity, right now I'm at 100%. I'm going to type my five key to get me to 50%. And now with a nice soft edge brush, I just want to darken some of these light areas in here. I'll make that brush bigger and paint across here, over to here. Now I'll make the brush smaller and paint up in here. I'm going to paint that another time. Now remember, when I unclick the mouse or if you have a Wacom tablet and pen and lift your brush and then paint again, you will increase that amount. Okay, I'll make the brush a little smaller and come in here. I just want to darken some of this area down right here and maybe i'm going to come in here and get this one more time right there and i think that looks good now i'm not done yet because what i want to do is add some saturation and so right now i have a selection i need to deselect my selection so i'm going to come to my combo panel click this button right here and now i want to add a hue saturation adjustment layer so i'll click this button right here but i want to clip it to the layer right below it where I darken the water. So we'll click on the paper clip. And then what I want to do is increase the saturation. See, it's only targeting the area that I painted on in the mask. And I want to take this saturation up to right there, plus 61. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before, here's after. See, just that nice little saturation. I'm going to shut off both of these layers. Here's before and here's after. And I really like that. And now it's time for a TK action. So if your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button on either the combo or CX panel. I want to use the Orton effect, just the basic Orton effect. I'm going to click this button right here. The Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I'm just going to click OK. Now that's way too strong. And so we're going to come to the layer opacity and I'm going to drag this back to right there, 40%. But I'm not done here because what I want to do is only apply this to dark tones. So what we'll do is click on our edit blend if button and let's find some darks we want to apply to here's darks one here's darks two here's darks three now if i shut off the gray checkbox you can see it without edit blend if and this is what it looks like with it and now if i shut off the orton effect here's before and here's after and i really like it but it's going on the ice which i don't want so we could take care of that let's come to the combo or cx panel Click on the layer mask calculator. I love it. And if you love it, let me know in the comment section below. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps my channel to grow. I really appreciate that. And leave comments and questions. I really want to hear from you. So what I want to do here is subtract out the ice or just apply it to the background either way. So I'm going to click on background and just click the apply. Or I could have clicked on ice and subtracted the ice. Either way, it would have worked. So now let me shut this Orton effect off. Here's before and here's after, but it's only on the background, and that looks really cool. And the Orton effect in the background is helping to add some depth into this image. Next up, I'm looking at the ice, and see some of the highlights in the ice? I'd like to add a little bit more lightness to those. It'll make that ice glow a little bit, and I think that'll look really cool, so let's do that. I need to get to the multi-mask panel, and right now, Edit Blend If is in the way, so click the X on Edit Blend If, nothing changes on edit blend if layers now what we need to do is target the light areas of the ice so click on the luminosity mask button we default with lights one let's try lights two you know what lights one i think is going to be good it's going to be a little broader 
and I think it'll be a nicer effect. So we use Lights One. We need to output this, so we're going to click on this hamburger menu, and I want to output it to a screen brush. Now, you'll note that I was on this Orton Effect group. Whenever a group is open like this, this adjustment will go inside the group, and I don't want that. So here's what we're going to do. Hold your Command or Control key down and click on Screen. And what we get is a curves adjustment layer on the top of the layer stack with a black hide all mask and we're painting through a selection. I want my brush opacity at 50%, which it is. And if yours isn't, just type your five key. That's the shortcut to get you to 50%. And then with a nice soft edge brush, just start to paint some light areas, just on some of the lighter areas of the ice, like here and here, over in here, maybe up in here a little bit right there you don't want to go too crazy here let's paint some on here let's come over in here paint a little bit here and here and here maybe just right there let me shut this off here is before and here is after see how it just adds a nice little glow there now if you want to on your combo or cx panel click this live clipping button and make sure if you see any red in here, that means you're clipping. If you see a little bit of blue, like you see right here, I don't, I'm not worried about that. That's a little bit of shadow clipping, but I don't want any of my highlights to clip, and they're not. And then to get rid of the live clipping layer, just click this button again, and we're good. And again, here's before I lightened up the highlights and the ice, and here is after, and I really like that. Now, don't forget about layer opacity, which is really great to fine tune. And this effect may be slightly too strong, so I'm going to click right here and just pull back on the opacity to like 80%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Don't forget about your layer opacity. It's a good friend. Next up, I want to take an artistic license here and increase the saturation of the ice only. I think that'll look really cool. So to do that, what we can do is click on our hue saturation button. That adds a hue saturation adjustment layer. And let's click on our layer mask calculator let's click on ice let's click apply and now we're only targeting the ice so let's take the saturation and pull it up a little bit we don't want to go too crazy here but i think i'm going to go right here to plus 20. now let me shut off this layer here's before here's after just that little extra blue you know that blue is playing off that yellowish orange complementary color and i really like that we're almost done just a couple steps the next step is a vignette if your tk actions aren't open click your tk button on either the combo or cx panel click on the basic vignette it's the top one right here a gaussian blur comes up just click ok and what i want to do is increase the opacity and i'll take it up to right here 45 percent let me shut off the layer here's before Here's after. I really like this vignette on this image. It looks great. Now, finally, I want to add some detail to the ice and to the beach, which will add some more depth into the image. We'll click on Camera Raw. That opens the Camera Raw filter, stamps your layers together, and gives you a smart object. We want Effects. If Effects isn't open, click on Effects. And then we're going to increase the texture. We'll take it over to right there, plus 40. We'll give it some clarity. I'll take that over to plus 21. And just a slight amount of dehaze, not much, plus 2. And then we'll click OK and output this. Now, right now, it's over the entire image. I want it mainly on the ice and a little bit on the beach. So here's what I'll do. I'll come to my trusty friend, the layer mask calculator, give it a click. I'll click on ice and click this button right here to apply it. It applies it to the ice. And now what I want to do is grab a white brush. So I'll click on the white brush button. And with a layer opacity of 50%, I want a nice soft edge brush. So I'm going to get a nice big soft edge brush. And all I want to do is paint over the beach area like this. Now I can get on the ice because it's already at 100%. Make sure I get this entire area right here. And now let me go ahead and shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. See how that just adds depth into the image. We got a lot more detail up here and less into the background. Well, there it is, everyone. The edit is finished. Let's come to our combo or CX panel. Click our before after button. We started out here and we end up here. I really love the way this image turned out. And I do hope you give it a try. Don't forget, you can download the image and the PDF notes. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. This was the first edit of 2025. And again, Happy New Year to everyone out there. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, 
please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Gully. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.